happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega, and I'm here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be, the point of it all. Okay, tonight for our Ways of Becoming Happier, number three, uh, we're going to be talking a bit about um, something I brought up uh, during the last show, the idea um, of integrating, actually we're, we're going to be talking about um, many different uh, strategies and considerations, but the first one will be the idea that like in order to increase happiness, we have to learn certain principles and certain ideas, but that's just, that's just the first step. Um, really, the main ingredient in increasing happiness is not just learning these principles and ideas, but then integrate, integrating them into our memory and then having them become habit. Um, it's, it's like with anything. It's like, um, let's say we're learning um, a tennis stroke or how to throw a ball or something. You know, We learn the fundamentals, and then through practice, uh, what we learn becomes uh, automatic. It's, it's something we don't have to think about anymore, and that's what we want to try to get to when, when we learn the, the various happiness principles. Um, the first thing, yeah, the first thing to do is like mem uh, we have to memorize various principles. For example, um, the idea of, um, of not chasing money, of, um, of just um, of relying on friends and family, on people for our, for our happiness, just knowing these basic things and just knowing them so well that, that we can apply this knowledge to our everyday living. Um, then there are, there are other considerations like uh, a lot of becoming happier means um, that we have to f um, remind ourselves to be happy. It's kind of like a lot of times we're going through our days and we're going through different activities and in being involved in, in different kinds of uh, work or leisure activities that really distracts us from our happiness because often we get so involved in what we're doing that we forget to be happy. So, um, so one uh, a key to becoming happier is to constantly remind ourselves that um, that happiness is the key, and, and also to, to constantly acknowledge to ourselves that, that we are happy and that we're actually very happy. Um, one strategy that I'm working with presently is um, using both affirmations and tape recorder statements. I'm, I'm, right now I'm, I'm working on a paper um, designed to, to explain the theory of happiness and happiness increase. And the idea is that a lot of times happiness really is about our thoughts, what, what we're actually thinking. And so that when we think the thought, you know, I feel very happy, that actually creates the feeling. So, so getting into the habit of, of constantly, whatever we're doing, um, tuning into our, our happiness, tuning into to the, the fact that happiness really is a, a very a special part of our, our lives, um, to a great extent the point of it. Um, sometimes we have to balance this um, with the demands of, of our job. Like, for example, um, you know, if we have to concentrate on certain things naturally, we can't be thinking about happiness all the time. But if we take the time to make it um, habit through memorizing the principles and, and practicing them, then, um, then it can be automatic so we can devote more of our, our minds to the other activities we have to engage in. Okay. Um, the next, um, the next strategy I think we should um, think about is that, you know, sometimes we, we tend to believe that we have to wait for our happiness. You know, a lot of us, for example, will say, well, you know, when, um, when I graduate school or when I start making a lot of money or when I retire, when, when this or that happens, you know, a lot of times we have a tendency to say, well, we can't be happy right now or we can't be as happy as we would like because things have to happen, certain things have to change. And that's really um, a great misconception and, and, and it prevents us from, from doing what we can in the present to be as happy as, as we can in the present. Um, the reality is we don't have to wait for, for those things to happen. And in some cases, um, though the things that we believe will make us happier in the future, like making more money and perhaps getting retired, really don't have that much of an influence. 
you know, sometimes if we make efforts to plan these things out very well, like retirement, then they can have a great influence. But the idea is that, um, that really we shouldn't wait to become happier. We can, we can practice the skills and, and the principles, the behaviors and thoughts that, that are necessary to happiness right in the present. So there's, there's no reason to wait any amount of time to, to really become much happier. Okay, um, something else I think we should do. Um, um, they found that basically the, the very happy people among us do a lot of what makes them happy. You know, it, it's an it's, the idea is like really tuning in to what makes us happy. What, what is it that, that brings us the most pleasure? And then, you know, make, m making time, making time to, to do this, um, giving attention to it, giving priority to it as much as we can, and really engaging tho in those activities. Now, for some people that could mean um, just basically being with a lot of people, people we love, people we, um, who make us happy, who, who we love to laugh with. Uh, for some people, uh, that could be um, doing work, um, either working on our jobs, which many people love, or working um, on hobbies like gardening or, or playing an instrument. You know, the, it really is. Um, see, because happiness depends on, on these four different um, components. Uh, the first one is the, the presence of pleasant feelings, and the second is the absence of unpleasant feelings. So naturally, when we take the time to invest a lot of time in doing what creates pleasant feelings, we're going we're gonna to up that equation. We're going to have many more pleasant feelings than unpleasant feelings. Okay. Um, Oh, uh, there's um, one of the one of the considerations I did a few shows ago regarding um, what what makes us happier. Or, or they found that like people who are religious tend to be happier on average than people who are less religious. And um, and one of the ideas that um, I went over was um, that you know sometimes that that's because uh, um, religious people will tend to have an expectation or a hope of um, a more pleasant life um, after we die. You know, many of us, many of us are afraid of death. Many of, many of us think, well, you know, when we die, it, it's over, and there's nothing after that. And, you know, that's it. So, um, to the extent that we hold that kind of a belief, you know, it, it could be either scary or, um, or if not scary, it certainly doesn't um, seem to lend to to pleasant feelings or aspirations. Um, I think the reality is, and I think religious people understand this, or, or many do, um, is that we can't know, you know, that's why they, religions are called beliefs, you know, we, we can't really know what happens after we die, but it, it just seems a lot wiser to cultivate and, and develop the belief that, that when we die, we, we go to a better place, you know, heaven, paradise, um, however we would want to describe it. Okay, uh, let's see. Here's, here's something, a uh, consideration that, that's, that's pretty important because, um, well, you know, it, it's like happiness is in, in a lot of ways the great equalizer. I mean, um, you know, money doesn't make a difference, intelligence doesn't make a difference, race, race ethnic background, um, so many kinds of differences that exist in life, they just don't make a difference in terms of happiness. And, and one of these is, um, is intelligence. You know, it doesn't matter how intelligent or not we are, uh, we are equally able to, to be very happy. And that, that's really good news for a lot of us. Now, having said that, there is one qualification. The intelligence that they're talking about when they um, found these results is the, the in intelligence they test in school, you know, IQ. And that, ha that, that refers to like academic intelligence, uh, memory, uh, things like that. But you know, there are other kinds of intelligences, like, like emotional intelligence. And although I haven't um, found research on that yet, I would guess that, um, that developing that kind of intelligence, um, understanding feelings, understanding other people, understanding those kinds of um, you know, emotions, um, really would probably help um, us to, to be happier. But again, you know, it's, it's very good um, that, um, that, you know, one can be very, very happy regardless of one's level of intelligence. Okay, um, something else. I think it, it's wise for us to, um, to weigh our pleasures ag against uh, investments in pleasure. And what I mean is sometimes we'll, we'll come home from a day of work and, um, and you know, maybe we'll, we'll be a bit tired and all. We want to do something pleasant. And, you know, sometimes we'll... Um, 
let's say, uh, turn on some music or, or watch TV, especially with TV. And, and TV can be a pleasant experience at times. Um, and we'll do this, and it, it will, to a certain extent, create pleasure. Sometimes with TV, if we watch too much, it'll ha have the reverse effect. But a lot of times, the kinds of pleasures we choose will, in fact, um, make us happier. But see, um, the consideration here is that we want to weigh that against investments in greater pleasure. In other words, um, if we have um, some time after work, some free time during the weekends, evenings, um, we can invest. We, we can just seek pleasure, you know, being with friends, watching TV, reading a good book. Or we could also invest some of our free time in learning how to become happier and practicing this learning. The idea is that um, if we devote some time, and this could be like a hobby, like, you know, like gardening, like, like anything, if we, if we devote some time to learning how to become happier and, and, and practicing these techniques and principles, then um, that could actually be a pleasant experience in itself. But what happens is we create an avenue for greater pleasure in the future. So that means that, you know, in the future, if we work on our happiness now, we can be, um, we can be much happier at work, much happier regardless of what we do. Again, um, the idea is to, um, to really weigh our pleasures in the present against working on pleasures for the purpose of, of feeling much happier in the future. Okay, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a, a song. Uh, the title of the song is called, uh, If You're Ready. Okay. Like the best of futures, we must leave the past behind. Feel courage and begin to understand the change that comes with time. Time to again believe that love can conquer all. Time to refuse to let the least among us fall. If we care about our children and the world we leave behind, we must tend to all around us and see to it that we all are kind, kind to the different ways we don't yet understand, kind to every living being in every land. Alright, uh, let's see. Now, um, the next uh, strategy and consideration we want to go through is that um, in, in the research they found that a lot of what determines how happy we'll become 
is how realistic our goals are. You know, we all have goals in life. Some of them are long-term goals, some of them are medium, and some are very short-term in terms of like what we'll do on a certain day. And really, um, some of us are much better at making goals that we can meet, that aren't too easy so that they don't pr provide any challenge, but that aren't too difficult um, in the sense that we won't be able to accomplish them. So, um, so really making goals that, that are attainable and that provide some challenge is very important to, um, to our, our long-range increase in, in happiness. Um, the idea, again, it's, um, you know, goals, goal, I mean, goals are actually just one strategy. I mean, we can, we can also be um, very happy through, you know, through friends, through other kinds of work. Uh, but, but some of us really choose to, um, to access a lot of our happiness, a lot of our pleasure through goals, through making goals and fulfilling them. So again, if, if we want to use that as our strategy or as, as an important strategy for increasing our level of happiness, it really is very important to, um, to just really think about the kinds of goals we make. You know, if we're, if we're making a goal that's too difficult to reach, you know, that's going to be very frustrating. If it's too easy, it's not going to provide a challenge and, and it won't be fun. Okay, um, let's see. Another um, consideration is that um, being extroverted is, is really important to our happiness. Um, extroversion is one of the four character traits that is most correlated with happiness. Um, the research has found that those, those of us who are most extroverted will, um, will be happiest in, in a sense. And actually, you know, I want to explain the, the difference between causality and, and correlation in this, in this, at this point, because I've, I've mentioned that certain personality traits and certain uh, situations and conditions are, are correlated with happiness, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they create or cause happiness. On, on the other hand, it, it can mean that. Um, basically, correlation is that when they, when they find um, in studies that, that people are very extroverted, they'll find that, that a lot of people are happy at the same time, that you know, the, same, the kinds of people who are very happy tend to be very extroverted. Now, one can't easily uh, conclude that extroversion causes or creates much hap more happiness. It could be, on the other hand, um, you know, th the, the exact opposite, that becoming happier causes a person to come, become more extroverted. But I think a lot of times, in general, we'll find that the personality traits that are correlated with greater happiness, like, ex like extroversion, will tend um, to cause uh, greater happiness. But um, yeah, with extroversion, it, the idea is that you know, people are our number one source of happiness. It's um, you know they really provide us with um, with the kind of stimulation, the kind of companionship, and um, just the, 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 the it's the it's really I think a lot of both intellectual and emotional stimulation. When we're involved with with people, it's it's a very active process, and and, and our mind really is pleased by that. Our mind is very active in, during those times. And being extroverted really helps in that because um, to the extent that we're more extroverted, we create more opportunities for socializing. You know, extroversion means um, to a great extent that we're not afraid of other people. That um, if, we, if we're at a party or at um, some kind of gathering and we want to um, talk with people, we won't shy away from them. We'll approach them and we'll um, you know, we'll have confidence in ourselves and in other people and the relationships and, um, and we'll enjoy other people. We'll, we'll, we'll enjoy expressing ourselves to other people. So, um, so extra extroversion really is very important. Um, something that's also very important to our happiness, and this is interesting because um, although the current literature on happiness doesn't go into this too much, they actually did some research on happiness. I believe it was back in the 30s. I'm not exactly sure about um, the date on this, but um, I remember r uh, running across some literature where um, they studied happiness a long time ago, and they really discovered, that's one of the discover discoveries that they made um, many, many years ago, that um, it's important to get enough rest and sleep. Um, when our minds are fatigued, um, it's difficult to function in general. It's, you know, it's difficult to, um, to do what we have to do, it's difficult to concentrate, 
and along with that difficulty comes um, difficulty in accessing pleasant feelings. You know, a lot of times perhaps we're so involved in trying to do what we have to do that we don't have the energy to expend on, on the luxury of, of feeling really good. So, um, so again, you know, getting enough rest and sleep really is important to our happiness and, you know, you know, um, there, there are different strategies for doing that, of course, get, getting exercise, um, having um, pre-bedtime pre activities that are conducive to sleep, um, you know, so um, again, that, that really is a very important. Um, okay, another consideration um, is that a lot of times we, um, we tend to value goodness and we tend to value uh, things being right, being very good. Um, and there's this expression that, um, that goes, the, the perfect is the enemy of the good. And um, it's, it's, it's very, I, I think I found this in a, in a book about art. You know, sometimes what we'll do is we'll try to get things so right. You know, and this, this involves raising kids, our, our work, um, whatever we're doing. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll be so honed in on, on trying to do something really right that that that, um, that goal will become more important than our enjoying whatever we're doing, that our enjoying our, our friends or our family or, or the time we're spending. Um, we, we enjoy getting things right. It gives us a good feeling. When things are, um, are done well, we, we, you know, it creates pleasure. Um, but when we overdo it, you know, the exact opposite can happen. Um, because a lot of times, you know, just the world isn't perfect, we're not perfect, um, many situations just, you know, don't become perfect. And the more we understand this, um, the better we are at keeping our focus on the happiness. Um, again, um, when, we, when we choose to, to consider our happiness, our good feelings, our pleasure, as important as what we're trying to do, because that, to a great extent, you know, it is, um, then we can, we can focus on it and, and not dwell on, on having things become better than, than we're capable of making them or better than they need to be. Okay, um, see the next one is, I did a show on this recently, um, it's the idea of um, understanding determinism. You know, um, you know it, it, it's, it's kind of ironic, I mean it's like, for, for so many years, you know, people would look at the sun and they would think, oh, this, you know, this sun is, is like traveling around the earth. You know, it's, it's going from one horizon to the next, it's traveling around us. And I, I imagine even like many, many years ago, people would look at the sun and, and say, oh, it's a different sun coming up each morning and setting each night. And so, you know, um, you know, those observations seem very self-evident. It seems like, you know, it's, it's a, a different sun or the same sun traveling around the Earth. And, um, you know, of course, through science, we've discovered that um, it's actually the, the exact opposite, that it's we, the Earth, that is revolving around the sun. And so, you know, the, the world reality is, um, has um, other illusions like that, and the, the illusion of free will is one of them. Um, you know, it seems very, very evident to us that, that we control our, um, we decide what, what we'll think and what we'll do, um, you know, our feelings and, and, and our actions. But, you know, the, um, the work of science and philosophy, um, our, our best work in logic, you know, which, which really underlines, underlies science, um, really um, informs us that, that, um, that free will is really not the way things are, that it, it really is impossible because of uh, a principle of cause and effect, wherein um, moments lead to other moments in the present and future, and what happens is you have the past creating the present and the present creating the future. So, so even, even though it appears that, um, that we have free wills in actuality, we really don't, and you know, this has implications toward our happiness because what happens is like when other people do things wrong, you know, when we believe in free will, we'll say these people are bad, you know, look what they're doing and all, you know, uh, and we'll judge them and we'll condemn them and we'll criticize them and, and, and that creates a separation between them and us and it, it leads to feelings of contempt and, and, you know, just very unpleasant feelings. Um, the same happens when we do something wrong, we'll tend to condemn ourselves and feel very guilty. So um, when we when we recognize that um, that we don't have free wills, that as Shakespeare said, we're really all actors. 
you know, and God or fate is, is the director or the, the, the playwright, um, when we realize that we really don't have free wills and we're just like destined to do whatever we do, then we can, we can be a lot more understanding of other people and a lot more understanding of ourselves. Um, I think another point I made regarding um, determinism that, uh, and free will is like, with free will sometimes when we do something really good, we'll tend to be very um, prideful, very, you know, sometimes arrogant. Um, and again, when, when we recognize that, hey, whatever we do that, that might be good, is, it's only because we were destined to do it. You know, we had nothing really to do with, um, you know, destining ourselves to do it. Um, when we recognize that, then we're, we're, we're much more humble. You know, we're, um, and, you know, our humility brings us closer to other people. They, they you know, it, it helps them to like uh, us more. And again, when we don't feel, you know, um, boastful or prideful, we, we tend to like people more in, in that, that regard also. And um, I guess the last idea related to determinism is the idea that um, sometimes, you know, other people do really good in life and sometimes we'll tend to maybe envy them or, or say, gee, you know, this person's so great and I'm not so great in comparison. And again, we can use that same consideration of determin determinism to realize that you know, some people are, are fortunate. Some people are great athletes, great um, entertainers, great politicians, you know. But it really is um, because they were destined to, to be that. And um, so there's no reason for us to compare ourselves um, to think we're less than, than they are, you know, because of that. Okay, well, well, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. This is George Ortega saying, think well, be good, feel very happy, and I hope you join me again next week here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful, it's our underlying need Happiness is why we live each day, happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy